Hi there everyone, I hope you've had a great week. I uh, don't know where you are in the world, but it's been a very rainy day here in the UK, but looking forward to the long bank holiday weekend. Not sure what your plans are, but I think mine will include having lots of sleep, doing some exercise. I'm gonna visit a park tomorrow, go outside for a walk, visit a stately home in Silso called Rest Park. So that's my weekend. But now on to tonight's subject, which is all about um, tips for a career change. So there's loads and loads of different ways you can approach a career change. And that's what I tend to specialize in, although I do coach in other areas, imposter syndrome, confidence, leadership. But I do do a lot in careers because it's something that I've um, experienced myself, several career transitions and shifts, and they've all had their own unique circumstances. Um, and as I always say, there's more than one way to skin a cat, which basically means there's more than one way to change your career. That The thing about a career change is making it work for you. And that may mean that you have some money behind you. That means you can move quite swiftly. Perhaps you're in the current situation, you've been given a payoff and you are able to um, have some financial backing for your change. Perhaps you have been reduced to part-time hours, which might sound a bit scary, but I believe that these fears, we, if we turn these fears into action, we can really make progress towards our goals. So thanks for joining this evening. Um, so make this career shift work for you. Figure out what your comfort levels are. And last week I did a whole video, I think it was last week, on finances, because finances obviously do play a part. So listen back on that one in terms of how you can like review your finances, uh, reorganise your finances to suit your career change. But take your time. As I say, for some people it might be, do you know what, I just have to absolutely move now because I just can't bear it anymore. And perhaps you're lucky enough, as weird as it sounds, to have a redundancy situation where you've got a package. But for some of us it might be a slower transition over time. So what I'm saying is don't kind of get ahead of yourself and rush too much. Think about, you know, taking your time, doing your research, and making this change at a pace that's comfortable for you. There's no right or wrong answer. And as I so often often say in my videos about career shifting is that there are many many different forms of career shifting it may be improving your current situation getting a promotion where you are it may be a complete career shift it may be a slight hack so for example I was coaching somebody who hi Lisa I was coaching somebody who was um, in the area of human resources and because of something that happened at work she suddenly had a light bulb moment about actually I want to be in diversity and inclusion. So in her instance, that career change was really about emphasising some parts of her HR experience that she'd not put so much detail about in her CV and recalibrating her CV and recalibrating her job search to make sure she was focusing on diversity and inclusion. All right, Danny? <laughs> so to make sure it included diversity and inclusion I don't mean diversity the group by the main by the way I mean uh, diversity and inclusion in the HR sense so figure out what you're comfortable with and as I say if you want to figure out you know how do I balance finances if I want to change my career then have a look at the video that I did I think it was last week because that gives you loads and loads of different options to help you take your career shift at the pace that is right for you because as I say I coach all sorts of different people and everybody's got different considerations it may be that your kids have grown up it may be that your kids are still in school and you've still got to think about financing their education it could be that you are you know you're single and you are supporting yourself it could be that you've had a redundancy payout which gives you a sort of springboard for you to change your career or it could be do you know what I just want to improve my current situation or I want to set up my own business so really think about you know the pace that's right for you there's no one size fits all the worst thing you can do is um, sort of rush yourself and feel under pressure to do something but if you are going through this sensation of I'm really not happy in my career, just have a think about where you are, evaluate your situation. And I use a really kind of very simple um, metaphor for this really, I use traffic lights. So um, traffic lights, obviously red, yellow, green. Red means, do you know what? I am completely at standstill in my career. I can't bear it, I've got to change now. And as I mentioned so often, the longer that we put off changes, especially in our career, 
the longer we put that off, it erodes our confidence and self-esteem and it has an impact on our mental health later on in life. So there is scientific data to back that up. So you might be at that red level of, do you know what, I really can't handle this anymore. You might be at amber, somewhere in the middle where it's like, do you know what, I really think I need to change. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about it a little bit. And then green is like, all systems go, my career is fine. So use that kind of image, if you like, or that metaphor to figure out where you are and what the urgency and what the timing is around your career change because there's no sort of one size fits all um, for doing this. Um, so evaluate your situation and very often any change that we, whether it's change that happens to us in the outside world and we're seeing a lot of that at the moment or change that we feel growing inside of us. I don't know about you, but certainly when I've had changes in life, whether that's been about relationships, whether that's been about careers, moving house, it's been something that's building out inside, but building up sort of inside of me. And it's it's kind of like having a rumbling tummy that just doesn't go away, it gets noisier and noisier and noisier. So really sort of think about this being, it might feel scary, but exciting. Think about it as exciting and think about it as a real turning point in your life. That's a really nice way of putting it, is a turning point or a pivot point. What it means is you're making degree shifts to make your, to improve your life and your circumstances. So try and think about it as a really helpful turning point. And try, if you are feeling uncomfortable, then try and ask yourself, you know, what are these feelings about? What is potentially holding me back from my career shift? Because what is very, very interesting, and I see it a lot with clients, I speak to a lot of people during the week that come to me for coaching, and it's like, oh, maybe not at the moment, you know, a bit worried about X, Y, and Z, then usually within the next few months, they've come back to me, or even sometimes a year, and said, do you know what, I stayed, and it got worse. And in some cases, some people have almost created situations um, by to get them out of their job as weird as it sounds you know I have met people that kind of somewhat sabotage their situation so it's like oh well I have to move now we're very good at creating those situations as human beings um, skills you know have a think about if you're going into something new um, have a real like I think I've got a skills audit so if somebody wants a skills audit or a skills check checklist or a strengths weaknesses um, checklist then please get in touch because I've got loads of tools like that that will help you write this stuff down and get it down on paper. But think about what are my transferable skills. If you're moving to a kind of um, a new area of business, a new area in your career, and you might be feeling like, God, I haven't got any skills in this area. Yes, by all means, look at what training you may need to do. But also think about, I bet you there's so many skills that are transferable. Those can be technical skills. They can be soft skills. There's so many different types of skills and really start, um, you know, having, I don't know, have a document on your computer or a notebook and start really drilling down into, OK, these are my key strengths. This is what I've got to actually offer technically and soft skills wise, soft skills being like, you know, management, leadership, negotiation, all those more interpersonal skills rather than technical stuff that we do. They're more like stuff to how we act, you know, how we be as a leader, how we act as a manager. So really take time to figure out what those transferable skills are. Because um, particularly if you want to go into something that's management or leadership, there are certain skill sets that will come in very handy. It doesn't matter what sector you're in or what role you're in. Those skills will become be very handy in terms of leadership development or coaching or whatever it is. So um, have a think about your transferable skills. OK, now. Um, have a think again. I talked about the traffic lights earlier and about taking your change at your own pace and figuring out where you are best based on red, yellow and green. But um, take a few minutes to stop and think about why are you making the switch? Um, is it because in your current role there's stuff that you just don't enjoy anymore and is there a way that you can improve that situation and again that's something I've helped a lot of people with it's very oft it's very easy to sort of have a bad day at work perhaps your boss has been a bit of a pain in the what's it and it's like right that's it I'm off I've had enough now just stop and think for a minute and think am I responding um, am, am I acting or, or, sorry, or reacting? Or am I just acting on impulse? Now, I'm not saying stay, stay stuck if you're put, but have a think about, you know, I'm not quite ready to leave yet. And I help people as well improve their current situation. So, for example, I was coaching, I've been coaching a couple of people in the NHS in leadership or sort of management positions. And we've been working through, well, hang on a minute. 
everything you tell me about what's important about your career, your role, seems to be saying that you want to stay within the NHS. So if that's the case, what's the position and how do we move you, navigate you to that position? Because it may well be, you know, you're not asking for those opportunities. You're not showing up in the right way. You're not showing up with influence or gravitas. Um, you're not sort of outlining what your results are. You're not building relationships or you're not really being responsible for your own career path. Very often in companies, I, you know, I hear people say, oh, well, my boss is rubbish. He didn't sort out my one to one and my review. In an ideal world, yes, our bosses should do that. And there are some great bosses that do do that. However, it's really about you being proactive as well. You know, any relationship is a two way street and we don't want to be sitting about waiting as a victim to see what lands in our in our plate. You know, have a think about what exists intern internally, what courses there are, where your career path um, could go, identify what that is and then I can help you produce a roadmap to get you there. So really understand that, you know, in terms of why you're doing, why you're making this shift. Is it that you want to sort of stay in the same career field but make a few changes to that existing role? Is it that you want to be working at home more? Well, let's face it, many of us are. There's a difference between choosing to and having to. I think that's changing a little bit now. But, um, you know, think about is it the same field you want to stay in or is it something completely different? So know why. Just ask yourself, you know, why? What is this change about? What is this? Is it is it the current role just needs to improve or is it simply I've had enough? And think about those traffic lights to identify, you know, I'm at red, yellow or green and what's behind that. OK, so um, the other sort of thing I wanted to share with you is that um Research has also shown that those that do change career are likely to experience higher pay and better conditions than those that stay in your current job. Because very often, if you want to stay in a similar field or just make a, a tweak or a hack on what you do and specialise in a certain area, I don't know about you, but certainly in my career and some of the people I've coached, even though career change can feel a bit scary and I've said like use it as a turning point, use those empowering words to see it as an opportunity, but sometimes the only way that we make those big leaps in terms, conditions and pay, even though the world we are, let's face it, in a funny place, but we can't control that. We can only control and influence what we do, really. We can influence people to a certain extent, but not entirely. Sometimes, you know, when you change jobs, you absolutely get that salary you deserve because sometimes where you stay where you are, you only get the incremental gains of like a little bit year by year, year by year. And again, you know, if pay is at the bottom, of, is at the root of it, figure out what it is you do want and what opportunities there are where you are in your current company if you're happy anyway, but it's just the pay thing. And again, I've helped people construct those pay negotiations because I've certainly had that in my career where I've actually asked to, I've done a bit of research in terms of surveys and salary, sorry, salaries and things like that. I've looked on LinkedIn and I've asked for what I've wanted. And then it, I've always had a number in my head about this is what I want. These are the conditions that I want. This is maybe where I'm prepared to settle, but I'm not going to let you know that. And then we've gone into a negotiation situation. It is possible where you are or it is possible to work with your boss to find a career path that helps you get to that level. But actually research shows that if you do change jobs and you do move as scary as it is you're more likely to um, increase your financial wealth and abundance so you know have a think about that that's definitely something that comes out in the re research and again going back to this feeling uncomfortable you know this is an opportunity for growth right so um this hello hi michaela this is an opportunity for growth it feels scary but as I so often say in my videos, fear hates action. So we want to build that fearlessness like a muscle, like we're going to the gym. So allow, you know, just accept that any change can be a little bit uncomfortable. We can feel um, overwhelmed. We can feel confused. I mean, the number of people that say, I don't know what I want to do. Well, you believe you me, you do know what you want to do in there. It's in there somewhere. Your brain's just like in a bit of a flight or, or fright or freeze situation. And that's what, you know, how working with somebody like myself or a mentor can help you uh, unblock all of that thinking for you. Because very often that fear can keep us sort of paralysed to where we are. So um, make sure and think about how you can make something uncomfortable 
feel exciting, invigorating, it's a turning point, it's an opportunity to change and maybe just get used to that feeling that any change is going to feel a little bit uncomfortable but actually it's in those moments of feeling uncomfortable and those moments of change where we experience the most growth. We don't experience growth if we stay where we are doing what we're doing and really having an impact on our mental health by staying in a situation um, that's not happy. Growth really does occur from moving out of those comfort zones and sometimes we've got into a comfort zone without even realising it and it's like oh my god I'm a bit bored I'm a bit frustrated what's going on and it's like wow I've actually been really static in my career for many many years you know I'm not getting the money or recognition I deserve but what have I done about it I've got into a comfort zone sort of told myself oh it'll be okay things will get better the pay's okay it's not too bad you know all these things we tell ourselves so allow uncomfortable situations to allow you uh, to grow and you know any new situation that you go into you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable at first if it's a new job or a new business but make sure that you are um, identifying where you need some help some support where you can break down any training or skills development you need to have bit by bit step by step so just appreciate that any change is going to feel uncomfortable it is completely natural it's completely natural I've had things in my life you know still get things today where it's like I'm just aware my brain is super aware this is a new situation for me so it's kind of like on high alert but don't allow that to sort of keep you paralyzed make sure that you're using that un uncomfortable feeling uncomfortable situation is what I call these turning points or we, we're hearing the word pivot a lot pivot points okay so um, be open to growth you know this goes hand in hand with this uncomfortable feeling um, you know somewhere within you even if you feel a bit stuck you know what you love doing you know what makes you happy yes in any career or job there are things that we don't always like to do like admin and stuff like that that's, that's just the nature of the beast. Can you make those tasks more enjoyable? Because even if you move to a new job, there are going to be things you don't like. Can you make those bits more enjoyable or can you outsource them? So you know what makes you happy. You do know what you want. You might need a bit of help because it's been suppressed for so long. You know, it's been suppressed, suppressed, suppressed because you haven't really done anything about it. But um, you do know what you love doing. Just think about those things in your role where the time flies and see if you can get more in that, more of that into, into your um, new role. And, you know, sometimes what we find um, easy are the things that really help us grow our career. And we can take those for granted. I know I did. Um, when I spoke to people or, and I had coaching myself in the past and went to workshops, I just completely took for granted stuff that I found really easy which was like uh, actually that's a massive asset that you're underplaying so you know make sure you'll be open to growth and speak to people that you trust be that a mentor be that your boss at work be that family be that friends and make sure you've got a really great set of people standing behind you okay talked about skills and strengths already if you do want a strengths audit an audit checklist I've got loads of different tools that will help you if you're feeling a bit stuck about oh god you know I haven't even thought about this all I know is I'm unhappy what are my skills and strengths let me know and I can send you one of those if you send me a message on Facebook okay um, and do your research prepare prepare you know this is what I talked about at the start of the video about doing this in your own time in uh, a time frame not rushing you know it's going to be different for everybody every you know I don't think I've had, ever had two career coaching sessions that have ever been the same I've had people that have um, had redundancy and just been able to use that as a springboard I've had people that have you know unfortunately kind of been sacked from their job or there's some weird situation that's gone on I've had people that are you know super super successful people but it's just something's missing or people that have you know their kids have flown the nest or you know they've moved somewhere and then it's sort of created a whole load of other shifts so do you know like I say it's all about working within your timing and identifying you know what kind of career shift you're happy with is it at the moment a, a tweak on what you're doing improving the situation where you are maybe sort of slightly shifting or something completely new but do your research and again you know <coughs> LinkedIn is fantastic um, 
if you're serious about your career and serious, serious about your success, then obviously being on LinkedIn is absolutely critically important. Having a great profile picture, all those details filled in, recommendations, endorsements, things like that, make sure it's up to date. But it is a great place to be doing research because it's keyword driven. If you type something in, you'll find inf information about the roles that you want to do. And you can see how other people got to those roles, what the roles are typically paying. So we can do that reality check on the final financial side of things as well um, you can speak to other people that have done those jobs you know all those roles you know do you know people in the industry um, can you do networking you know online networking are there special groups where you can ask people what it's actually really really like to work in this kind of field or this kind of role you know um, just ask people people are very very happy to help and LinkedIn is just such a fantastic place to get that research you know and understand what it's like to be working in those those industries and how people got there and again you know if you are using recruiters and headhunters there's so many different sort of types of headhunters and recruiters and the smart ones know that they can really help you uh, get an idea of what the industry is like they're not just going to kind of sell you on any old job okay so i've covered quite a few tips tonight i've talked about how you want to take the pace of change you know take your time if needs be unless you have got something that means you need to move quickly and you want to move quickly because everybody's situation is unique talked about the fact that this is an exciting turning point even though it might feel scary and that's completely human and completely natural but use it as a nice turning point a pivot point for your new life be aware that the longer you put off a change like this the more impact it has on your mental health over time and that's been clinically uh, proven and studied that actually it can eat into confidence self-esteem and depression and as I say the number of people that have come back you know after having an initial chat to say do you know what I'm still not happy know why you're making the switch what's your why you know um, is it because you've just had a really bad day with your boss or is it something more fundamental than that is it about, do you know what, Sarah, can you help me have a conversation with my boss that helps me get more money, better paying conditions, or I can really orchestrate my internal career path because it's not about leaving my current company or sector. It's about a hack or tweak on what I'm doing. Or is it about completely new business? Because for you, what you want is freedom of your time and, you know, that ability to self-determine your own business and your own hours. Think about your skills and strengths. Um, and be open to growth and see like this kind of scary change thing as an opportunity for growth. Um, and then also if you are moving from one sector to another or doing something a bit different, you will have transferable skills, I promise you. The number of times I've sat down with people and said, give me a list of your top, you know, transferable skills. And it's like, oh, well, I haven't, I don't know, I haven't really done anything. And then when we start talking, I've done it myself, you take for granted what comes naturally to you. But what comes naturally to you, those are some of your key transferable skills and strengths. So yeah, so I've packed in a few little tips there. I've got another Facebook Live next Friday at the same time. Don't quote me, but it's on my events page on my Facebook page, but it's about imposter, I think it's about imposter syndrome, but I'll, I'll post on what it is anyway, because um, I can't quite remember, it is Friday after all, um, but looking at imposter syndrome, also what I'm starting to do on Instagram is every, what day am I doing these, I think it's every Friday, uh, hi Stephen, I'm just finishing, <laughs> but you can watch it on replay, um, so um, on every Thursday at, oh crumbs, when am I doing it? No, every Friday at three o'clock, I'm doing an Instagram live and they'll be on different subjects. So, and they'll also be on my Insta feed, but I'll be posting this video afterwards. If you want any tools or exercises to help you unlock that kind of feeling of inertia or paralysis or not being sure about things and get in touch i've got loads of stuff that can help you i'll post this video afterwards and yeah have a great weekend if there is a subject you'd like me to cover um recently i just did a whole month on confidence and confident tips tips because one of uh, the people on my page asked me to do that so more than happy to do that around motivation time management leadership you name it i've probably coached on it to be fair so have a great weekend and if you're having a long weekend make sure you get plenty of rest and uh, spend it around people uh, people who lift you up have a good one take care thanks for watching bye oh hi Ingrid 
Oh, that's a pleasure. I'm glad you found it useful. If there's anything you need, uh, just drop me a message and yeah, let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover. But nice having you on the video. See you guys. Bye.